Hi, welcome back to part three, week 14, Ravens Roundup. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about our offensive line. As you see in the picture right here, you got uh, Big Orlando Brown, Yonder Hurst, getting ready to come out of the tunnel on KC. And what we're going to do is focus on, uh, show you the difference between how aggressive they are pass or run blocking, and then how, not I'm not going to say passive, because they're not a passive and actually play decent. They just look like a different five guys up there when they're run block or when they're pass blocking. So we just want to show you the difference between uh, pass blocking and run blocking. We're gonna start off with the uh, pass blocking. And again, this is an O line video. Uh, appreciate you watching. Make sure you uh, click that like button, uh, subscribe, and drop your comments down below. Here we go. Nice first play. Um, mainly the three, three of the past plays are going to be sacks, and then we have one where the protection just was not great. But let's get right into it right here. We have, uh, let's look at the potential blisters. One, two, three, four, five, six. Potential blisters in the box. We have six guys to pick it up, not counting the quarterbacks. You got your five linemen, Ty Montgomery. Right, initially, you got outside, two outside edge rushers. And you got your two inside rushers. So they're only bringing four. We're still good so far. We have a double team uh, here. Uh, everybody's one-on-one. -on -one. Everybody's in good position so far. I don't like the way how tall uh, Zeus is standing, though. Zeus is steady keeping pushback because he doesn't drop his butt. He doesn't drop his butt and uh, uh, and, and, and stop the, the power. Uh, Yonder has decent push so far. He's kind of getting pushed back. But still, we're in a good position right now now the pocket has collapsed because the ball didn't come out and now we're getting beat right here because your shoulders are not square if our shoulders were square we'd still be good but when you get that shoulder turn now you kind of force Lamar to go here because this is cut off that hole obviously wasn't big enough for him to get out now we got to say and part of this could be on the coverage because uh, he didn't fully get his uh, straight drop back hitch and throw so let, let's kind of blame this on coverage a little bit also. So I was like defend it pretty well. No, look at that. That's neat right there. Could have whipped that ball out of there. So this is on uh, Lamar and O-line just not getting the ball out. Mostly Lamar because he could have snapped this ball out of his knee. I play two. But let's identify the potential blitzers. You have one, two, three, four. Five, six on the line of scrimmage, and this linebacker sitting here. Now, right now you have one, two, three, four, five guys coming. He's sitting here spying the tailback. This is our sack that potentially could have cost us the game. Let's go back to it and kind of identify. See that I get in here pre snap. Let me go back and just a little bit. Okay, this is the part I want to want you to see. Ty Montgomery is trying to identify the coverage. Oh, well, not the coverage, the the blisters, and he makes a, in my opinion, makes a, a statement to Lamar that he probably should go over here. Browns or not Brown? It's Stanley. He's pointing these two guys out. You know, thinking I don't know if he was thinking they should slide this way or what. Why they didn't slide this way because they got so many guys on the line of scrimmage. And this guy has to be accounted for. But for whatever reason, they did slide that way. And Montgomery comes here instead of going here. So even with this look, I said this in another film, even with this look, Stanley should just block this guy because he's the innermost guy. And let him just run the hoop and hopefully he don't get that. But a simple fix would have been Ty Montgomery come to this side. He sees... Um, is that Houston and picks him up but playing it it's the fumble that potentially cost us the game um, luckily he missed the field goal and right, this is the play Lamar got hurt on this is also a sack let's identify our rushers uh, let's do D Ford in Houston and then you have a Chris Jones I think it's right here another D lineman and two linebackers so that's six guys that could potentially could blitz and honestly this guy could come too because he's so close to the line of scrimmage. But the only rush is four. 
and this I saw this play live. I thought this was going to be a draw. And the reason I say that, let's check these guys out right here. Watch, watch this. I think this was a draw that ended up being a sack. Sam just throws him by. I hope he doesn't miss that bad on purpose. Dixon comes up to block the the linebacker. So I'm, I'm going to say this is a draw. And because of the lack of punch Stanley got on on uh, Houston, it ended up being a sack and Lamar got hurt. Got his ankle twisted right about there. In fact, was that Houston's going to land on his ankle right there. But he's fine. He's going to start this week, so let's get it. Also, we got a hole on this plate also. Was that Yonder with the hole? Let's see. That's uh, Hurst. Chris Jones giving Hurst the business. Chris Jones from Little Old Houston, Mississippi. All right. And this is our last pass play. Look at all the blitzes. They got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're bringing seven. We can't block seven. Lamar has to... The protection has to be slid. Let's say slid to Lamar's left. And this guy has to be Lamar's guy. So, the all these, in my opinion, we should go here. Hurst here. Uh, Secure here. Uh, Yonder here. Orlando Brown here. Um, Tile D Ford off the edge. And 21 is Lamar's guy. Let's see what happens. See how it plays out. Okay. So we still we let him come free, which is fine, and they pretty much end up the way I expected. Just they did a little different. They got it picked up pretty good. I mean, even though they gave up a lot of ground, they picked it up pretty good. That's not bad. It's not bad. Not bad for an O line. It's great communication. I just wish uh, who's that Brown didn't stop on the route. All right, now you're gonna see a different set of O line in this run game. This first play is just simple. Power read. Power read. We should get um, down block by these three guys right here. Down blocks. Get a pull by Hurst. Ty Montgomery's going to uh, outside zone fake. And if um, see if this guy widens, uh, Jackson's going to uh, keep it. If he kind of crashes in, try to set the edge, he's going to get the Ty Montgomery going wide. And so we read the linebacker. Okay, that's fine. Let this guy come. No, we read the right person. Read right here. He stayed wide. He's pulling for him. Lamar keep it going right behind hers. Bam. Some power read. Nothing changed for the uh, O-line. The only thing that changes is the we don't block the end. We read the end. That's the only difference between regular power and power read. All right. Now, this play, I think it's stretch. I talk, somebody asked me on uh, Twitter, what do I think we should run a little more of? And I said stretch. Because the bootleg potential off of this could be awesome with Lamar's feet and his, his ability to get rid of the ball. Simple stretch to the right. Every try, everybody's trying to get leverage. And if you can't leverage your guy and what we call hook him, you just run him wide. Which is what uh, Brown's about to do now with this end. Alright, simple. Turned him in, which is great. He got the he pushing him wide. Yonder's going to get a block there. And we off to the race. Got up, even got up to second level. Hurts even see second level. That's great. It's a great picture right there. Good job, old line. I think Dixon got about 20 yards on this. A totally different team when we run blocking, I'm telling you. Just power. Simple power. Power football right down your mouth. Hurts is pulling for that same guy we just talked about. But instead of reading this game, now we're sending a tight end to block it. Bam. Max blocks. Hurst leads. Give it to Gus. Look at that. Seal. Seal on second level. Kick out. Wrap. Gus fitting right through there. It's a powerful ball. It's a totally different team with run blocking. That's why Lamar needs to play. Because the O-line strength is running. Their strength is run blocking. If Joe plays, we're going to throw a lot. And we're not good at that. Stretch again. Stretch again. Even though we get some backside pressure, who gave the backside pressure? All right, let's talk about this real quick on this stretch play. Every stretch to the right. Staley has to get there and cut this guy off. I don't know what the cut rules are in the NFL, so I want to speculate on it. But in high school, I would have told this guy, cut him. All right, and then we can go there, there, help, and go up to the second level. 
and you cut him and he going up second level also. They miss right there. Both guys miss, so that's where a little pressure comes from. But Dixon makes it work. Because he missed, everybody still had on hat. Dixon still turning them legs. Good job for another about 15 yards by Dixon. Now, just simply me running through this, you can tell the difference in run blocking and pass blocking for our O-line. Uh, we need the, the type of offense we've been running because we're a different team when we run the ball. Our O-lineman tells the story right there. We're a little bit passive in uh, pass blocking. A lot of uh, our guys' technique aren't great, but they're not terribly bad also. But again, this is uh, our O-line video for the week. Uh, again, we have um, Tampa Bay coming up Sunday. And um, it's week 14, part three, Ravens Roundup. We're still uh, in the pursuit of the wild card and the division. Ravens flock, go Ravens.